I'm going to do another one with a V12 and how I'm going to do the interior of my supercar and change it up. Structurally, a disaster. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on with this uh, King Zero thing, but uh, can you give me a call back? <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Stop it! <laughs> What's up, people? We're back today with the King Zero build. I've got the initial blueprint drawings that we had uh, drawn out after using just a movie projector from a laptop, and that gave me the opportunity to scale up some old drawings from models, photos, things like that, 8.9%, so I can initially get the shape and the inspiration for the King Zero build that originally came from that uh, prototype so long ago. I want to go over that, but importantly, I want to show you the mechanics and what the mindset is with how to do this and where we're going. Peyton's being a huge help on this. In fact, he came back from last year to apprentice just so we can build a car together and he can learn from it. So I'm excited about that. So to, on that note, Peyton, do you want to sh tell people where we're at right now? What's going on? Oh man, uh, so much. We have cut so much off of this This boxer. used to be a Porsche box. Yeah, yeah, this has gone on the Weight Watchers thick, fast diet. <laughs> it has, you know, almost all of its, you know, structural metal still there, but a lot of the sheet metal, all the filler is completely gone. Yeah. Um, we've got most of the front situated in a way that we can put our feet in the right spot, have the drivers and passengers sitting in the correct spot. We're still going to need to do some tube frame stuff just because things aren't located quite how we want them to be yeah. for the body work. Um, on the back today, we cut out a big section of metal and cleaned up the top of the engine and we're getting ready to take the uh, bolts that connect the engine to the transmission off and pulling the transmission forward. To do that, we're gonna need to actually cut this section of metal out of the floorboards. That's not a huge problem for us because we need that room to fit that mon monstrous honking V12 in there anyway. That's a very good point. And to add to that, just for everybody watching right now, a lot of what has been removed has made what we have here, this chassis, structurally a disaster. <laughs> you cannot drive this thing the way it is. There will have to be a lot added. There's yeah. gonna have to be more cutaway. And with regard to the, what is the blown up Porsche flat six or tied up or whatever was wrong with it, it doesn't run. <laughs> um, we're not gonna take it out nicely. We're gonna take it out meanly because all of this section of the chassis, the stock chassis has to be gone, like Peyton said, to fit the V12, which is sitting here peacefully. I'm also very happy because the stock wiring harness for the engine of the BMW came out actually very easily. I can, I can hold it up right yeah, here. Yeah, you got it? I mean, it's amazing. It's just, it just came right out. We didn't have to go through insane dissection or splicing for the whole car. Yeah. So fingers crossed, we'll be able to make it run happily rather easily. Uh, also, thank you to everybody who's reached out from around the world uh, with good information on that. So just wanna go over and show a couple of things in relation to how it works for building this car. Now, the car we're building, the King Zero, is going to be insanely low. Even with it being a scaled up, more muscly version of what the original inspiration was, it's still a few inches lower than a GT40, an original GT40. Yeah. So we're talking a car that's gonna be about 37, 38 inches tall at the most. Okay, now in doing that, the difficulty of course is the Porsche Boxer is by no means that sort of a low rider. So the first thing that had to happen is we needed some coilover shocks of a configuration that allowed us to get low. Very. And then from there, we had to put them on in not necessarily the appropriate way because we're going even lower. <laughs> yeah, we are actually. And the problem is when you go really, really low, you get into a realm of stance life, brah. And that's stupid <laughs> because it makes cars handle like garbage. So fortunately, we're um, doing everything else, but when you get a car super low, and right now the, the wheel is sitting up rather straight, but you get into massive amounts of negative camber because you're putting the suspension, and Josh, maybe you can come here and look from the front. You can see how this, uh, the suspension lower arm and the control rod, even not being all the way up, are getting to be in an extreme position. So what's actually gonna have to happen with this is, and you can see the coilovers here, we've mounted them in an extremely low position, actually a couple inches lower on the mounting of the upright here, the McPherson, than it was originally intended. It'll still work perfectly fine for 
strength and mechanical, but we have to get incredibly low because the prototype car, the top of the McPherson struts has to be so close to where the tires is. It's kind of absurd. Everything about this car is extreme. Now, I have to give a huge credit, and for you guys building stuff, I got these coilovers, they're reaction shocks from coiloverdepot.com. They're in Ohio, and I really like that company because I had to do something interesting. And they, they sell a bunch of different manufacturers, but the people there actually know what they're talking about. So when you're actually surfing the web and you have to go through all these manufacturers like very generic, stupid language that doesn't actually tell you anything, yeah. you can call up those guys at coiloverdepot.com and they know exactly what you're doing, they get it and they hook you up. So I really wanna thank them. They've made my life so much easier. So patronize them, it's, it's worth your time. So anyway, got these on here and I'm really happy with the relationship of the top of the McPherson to the top of the tire in terms of design. I'm gonna show you that on the design. Uh, same thing for the rear, it's gonna work really well. We still have room to be able to lower this. Now something I'm gonna to have to do, because we're getting into an extreme area, there's gonna to be too much negative camber, I'm gonna to have to section this out so the top of the McPherson can come out and run a proper amount of negative camber. The people that are into stance life, um, their cars handle like garbage. I don't care what they say, they just do. There's nothing about engineering or tire design that works well in that circumstance. Hey, if you wanna express yourself, that's totally fine, but prepare to get roasted by somebody that knows how to set up a car. <laughs> anyway, so I wanna get these tires to actually work as well as I can for this thing being a very weird avant-garde prototype supercar. So that's why I'm going to that extent. Now, another thing, in fact, Peyton, let's just get out the drawing here so we can show everybody just what I'm talking about. Let's start with the, uh, the side view right here. Side with logo? Smart enough to put that on. Yeah, let's get that out. Okay, now you guys may remember from my first video, this is the one that I did. Now this doesn't show, I'll tell you what, you take the rolly part and I'll take this side. Sure. Okay. This does not show any of the internals. This was the, I basically blew up a uh, drawing that someone had done of the original car and then altered it. Keep going, keep going, you're boring the people on the interweb. Oh, they're so bored. Okay, Peyton, you have to be Vanna White. Can you see this camera guy, Lois man? Okay, come over here. So Peyton, Vanna White. So you see the front tire and wheel there, you guys. Okay, do you see the little line that goes vertical from there? Okay, look up. Okay, show them the top, point to the top of the wheel well, this above the, the tire. Well yeah. Right now, we're talking very few inches to the top of the windshield there. Go to the top there. That's like, what, five inches at most? I would say, yeah. Okay, now go to the, go down a little bit. Yep. Up, up, up. Yes, that one. Okay, so that right there is the top of the fender, and that's approximately two and a half inches from the top of the tire. Now, go to the line just above that. Yeah, up there. That's only giving you, that's about five inches higher than the top of the tire. Now you're gonna see when we look at the next drawing, let's go ahead and roll this thing up real quick. So I bring that up, I'm gonna let Peyton roll this up. If you look at this here, this is a constraint, okay? Because you have your fender right about here, so if you only got about an inch of clearance and then about two and a half inches, that means this is where the body work's gonna be. It's insanely low. Now, if it went all the way over, it would collide with this. But at some point, it sort of hoops up like this and comes across. And believe it or not, this area gets finished and has to be nice and vinyl cover because this is in the interior. The windshield, which ends up being the door, will just barely clear this and, and um, it's kind of nuts, actually. Now, here's the problem with that. As of right now, the way we have the McPherson strut adjusted, it would clear the bodywork and all. However, the car is now adjusted at an extreme low position. It's only clearing the ground by like an inch and a half, which for a production-based streetcar suspension isn't gonna cut it unless you change things. So, you stay there and look. What I'm gonna have to do is, now, what's left of this McPherson strut tower is garbage, okay? We just left it on here for now to hold the shock in its position. But what's gonna happen is all of the sheet metal that holds the top of the shock will be cut away. We'll have to make a new plate to hold the top of the McPherson struts and it'll get tubes triangulated in such a manner as to be rigid and proper. However, the relationship from what I'm calling a frame rail here or the subframe to the height of this on the vertical axis will actually have to shrink, which will work just fine because the tire rides on the road. That's kind of constrained height in the vertical axis. And then the McPherson strut to the top of the tower is part of that constrained axis, other than it 
moving up and down with the spring, but let's just go with me for right now. But what we need to do is get the suspension and the frame up a little higher so that those lower A arms are no longer in extreme upward. We need to get them up a little bit where the geometry works a little bit better, just a little bit better, and we're not at an extreme position and get into weird bump steers and stuff like that. So to do that, we have to change the relationship of the points of the lower suspension and control arms and all this sort of thing and frame rail to the McPherson i.e. we basically have to take material out of this area and bring it together like this. It will still clear the bodywork at the top in the same way, but what will effectively happen is your floor and the bottom of the car will come up a little bit. Probably only going to do about an inch, inch and a half. The other issue you run into is you'll actually shrink up your cockpit area a little bit, but let's be honest, your knees are right about here, so you're really just shrinking the area for your feet. Um, it's already an extreme and absurd and obscene car. So that's, that's something that comes into play, but I'm really glad these coilovers are gonna work and we're gonna be able to use the uprights and all. I am gonna probably have to change the steering rack. But if you wanna look down here, you can see what's left of the Porsche Boxster motor. If you wanna come uh, step up on here, you can see it better. Obviously, horizontally opposed six cylinder, you can see the intake ports here. Uh, this car has been road hard and put away wet, but if you get a big wide angle kind of view, you know, this is a, don't die cameraman. This is a, an interesting motor to look at because you have your transaxle here, really nicely laid out. It's not that big. Uh, I saw a guy, maybe it's like Wesley Keegan. Is that the guy on the West Coast? Kind of a cool guy into Porsches. He's yeah. building like a, like a 60s Grand Prix Formula One car, but he used a Porsche basis and all. Really neat. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, and he's got individual throttle bodies on it. So this is just a really great platform to build your dreams, uh, Porsche Boxers. But my dream consists of getting rid of this Porsche motor and putting in the BMW V12. So what Peyton said, we're, we already cut away part of this engine bay here because we don't, we don't need it. Um, but this big transverse rail here is going to have to be cut out because there's going to be engine there. Uh, it's going to be cut out a lot. We're going to leave a little bit of it because we're going to need some mounts for the engine. And then the structure from this, there's going to be new structure making what's left of the frame torsionally rigid and, and strong and safe and side impact and all that. So there'll probably be new cross members up in this area, which we'll build with tubular steel and also uh, flat stock to make a box section. And the other thing is since the King Zero build that we're doing has no side doors, we will be able to build tubular steel being like a ladder frame in the whole side and the top, uh, which will be very, very strong. And the only thing that'll be a little bit of a trick is this open area here and, and getting your rigidity because you have the nature of the, the folding windscreen. But I did want to show, so here's the fun part of it. So Peyton, you know how like this is sort of like, I thought it would be way cooler to build a car instead of do commercials for Avalon King right now? Yes. Yes, I do. They, they called me and left a message. What did they say? I don't know. <laughs> this might be good or it might be god awful. Well, well here's the thing. <laughs> Who wants to do a commercial? Even though this stuff works, nobody's going to believe it if I do it. It's just way cooler just to build a car. They should just go with it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute. Let me find it. Here it is. Here it is. Wait. <laughs> Press play. Well, if I push speaker, it works. Casey, hey, hey, it's uh, David from Avalon King. I've um, been uh, trying to get a hold of you uh, for quite some time to Whatever. discuss our sponsorship. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on with this uh, King Zero thing, but uh, can you give me a call back as soon as possible? Thank you. No way, dude. This car is lit. Yes, supercars are way cooler than commercials. What's his name again? Dave. Dave, I, I hate to break it to you, man, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is too cool for us to stop. Okay, wait, I'll be nice. I'll be nice. Do you got water? Is there bottled water around here from somebody? I don't think so. Okay, you, fi you find bottled water right now. I want to show somebody the Corvette. I I'll, I'll be nice. We'll be nice. Okay, first of all, building a supercar is way cooler than doing commercials. Let's just agree to that. Dave knows. He'll get with it. Do you find anything? Go over there. There's something right there. Just get something out of the thing. Okay, let me give you an example. Avalon King ceramic coating. Okay, you guys all think it's crap. See this Corvette? Look at all these tire marks. It's terrible. They won't come off easily. I can rub them. It looks like crap. Why? Totally didn't use ceramic coating or Avalon King. You got water? I have acquired water. Okay, that, our Corvette, our beloved, looks like garbage. No ceramic coating. Let me show you this. Ah, my fancy Porsche. Getting ready to go to a Porsche club where they like shiny things. Oh, this has been ceramic coating. It's got dust on it. Do your worst. Well, don't do your worst, but pour water on it. Yeah, that's beating. All right. Like really nicely. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> well, I'm getting lightheaded. 
this is a terrible idea. Stop it! <laughs> I'm gonna clean this up. And on Casey's channel on YouTube, a man gets lightheaded from blowing his Porsche 928. Okay, um, so that works. Uh, you wanna clean it up? I can do that, yeah. You got something to blow with? I, I can blow it or... Totally works. There you go. Yes, supercar, Peyton. Wait, don't clean it up. We'll get it later. It's awesome. Let's look at the plans. This is way better. <laughs> Commercials suck. Okay, wait a minute. Which drawing do we want? I am going to get in trouble. I will never get a job again after this. Well, you know, jobs, schmobs, we have YouTube. Cut away with driver? <laughs> Cut away with driver. Ooh, drivers are fun. Let's do that. Okay, we're going the wrong way. You go that way. All right. <laughs> Yes, fine, yes. Fine. This isn't cool because the car is pointing the wrong direction. Well, you know, sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes things don't work out like lame commercials. Okay, so check this out. So here, I did a cutaway type drawing. Now this reflects the original Lancia Fulvia drivetrain, which also got scaled up 8.9%. Just to show it. I'm going to do another one with a V12 and how I'm going to do the interior of my supercar and change it up. But you can see that there's a boatload of room that's behind the driver all the way to the engine. And spare tire? Who needs one of those? Right? V12. Yes. But more importantly here, if you look at the McPherson, here's the center of the wheel. And here's approximately the top of the wheel. Look at this teeny tiny area from the top of the wheel to the front of the windscreen. That shows you the area you have for travel and mounting the top of the McPherson. So if I use my super, do you want to roll that up? Yeah, just set it on the ground. Just set it on the ground. Yes, this is like NASA. I've got my caliper here with this approximate measurement. By the way, I just want you all to know I converted all of my speedometers to furlongs per fortnight. Yeah, metric can eat me. Look at this, look at this. It's totally enough clearance now. Genius. Casey Calipers, you're welcome. <laughs> all right, what else we got? You want to show the front and rear? Sure. Okay, now for all of you somewhat older people, which is probably going to be Gen X boomers and older that are watching my channel, you guys actually know how to use a T-square and a triangle. Now, don't be all cocky giving it to millennials and Zoomers because they didn't get to because the school system decided if we get a bunch of fancy computers and sell everybody on this whiz kid technology that we can make a ton of money off of federal student loans and put kids in debt. I'm on a rant, aren't I? Yeah, but I'm struggling with duct tape. So Long story things. short, T-squares, drafting tables, and pencils are still cool. And that is no different than what I'm doing here, only way too big. Which direction? What am I doing? Yeah, go that way again. Ah, right. we're terrible at this. Okay, here we go. Pro YouTubers. Yeah, pro YouTubers. Pro YouTubers. Look at this, people. Here's a front and rear view of what the original car used to be. It scaled up 8.9%. This is just for me to get a thought. But I want to show you something if I can. Now, the problem is doing these things in full scale is I don't have a building big enough or a giant T-square, so I have projectors, but it's the same thing. So like if you need to get a point in space, which you're going to see when we start laying the body lines out with steel, to get a point in space, we'll put these out on the wall and we'll measure with a tape measure the length of something, but with this we can get the height of it and the width of it. So like, you know, we can get the width of the body. So like if this is where this point starts, then we just look at, and then we know the height, we know the height, and we know the, the width on that axis. So then to get the other axes of measurement of your Cartesian plane, you go to the other drawing, and it gives you a coordinate. And by doing drawings like this, side, top, front, rear, etc., you can get all your uh, coordinates to build the car in real life. And as an example, I could have taken pictures and drawings and things like that and give it to somebody with a computer to print this out. And that's what I was going to do. But they wanted to charge me an exorbitant amount of money. And that's stupid. Uh, and then if they screw it up or they do it wrong, then it's no good. But they would sell me a giant roll of paper for reasonably cheap. And then I just uh, begged my wife to get her parents, my in-laws, to bar let me borrow the movie projector. And then I could just project it to the size I need, and to get the scale, I just measure the drawing and draw it out. So now, for the investment of um, begging my in-laws, and <laughs> this is going to be bad, begging my in-laws and paper and some markers, I can make all my own drawings. So I want this to be an example to young people out there that think you have to do everything in a computer, that flat out a computer is not always the best tool for something. I do not want to use a computer building this. All it would do is slow me down and make, it, all it would do is slow me down and waste money and time. I, I'm serious, it would. This is better and faster. 
And if somebody wants to say otherwise, there's a reason people still do this sort of thing, right? I'm getting cocky. And we don't have to be accurate to the thousandth of a millimeter. No, like, it just has to be we symmetrical. We just need to be symmetrical, beautiful, simplistic, amazing. And look bitchin'. That. <laughs> and not get in too much trouble with Avalon King. Yeah. So anyway, what else do we got? This is pretty cool. Well, um, I'm super excited for the engine because this BMW V12 yeah. is so simplistic and yet so awesome and it's going to sound incredible. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's going to be very hard to put in. Um, we're going to have to obviously make mount points. No, well, not really. Check this out. So obviously the rear, here's the adapter plate, you guys, and yeah. everything goes. So that should, if, if the guy did it right, bolt up to the transaxle with the clutch and slave cylinder, all that works just fine. And the transaxle, the boxer, has great mounts in the back, so we just have to find the mounts for this. Right. But BMW, right here, built these beautiful cast aluminum buttress and gusset mounts. These are the motor mounts right here. It's one darn bolt. Look at that. All we have to do is tie in steel structure from our nodes of frame points to support it here and there. That's Which pretty is easy. About as easy as we could ask. Yeah, it's not much different than doing a small block Chevy at this point, but it'll sound a lot prettier. So looking forward to that. Obviously, this engine's a bit tired, so we got to seal it up and all. Yeah. So right now, the stage of the game we're at is got to get this motor out. We got to cut out the area, and then we've got it. We, we still have to do a little machining and reliefing of that adapter plate. One of the tolerances is off. But we've, then from there, we will be attaching the motor to the transaxle for mock-up. Uh, as you can see with the motor, we haven't totally uh, tuned it up and resealed it and cleaned it up and gussied it up and all that crap. Uh, same thing and for here, don't want to do that just yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get in here, bolt it up, get it in place because we've got to have an engine. We're building around a V12 basically. So that's got to be mounted and done nicely. And then that gives us the opportunity to make the mounts for the engine and know where our constraints are. How wide is it? How much room do we have to make? So we'll be cutting things away, adding structure, and doing everything we need to do to solidify where the drivetrain will be in this and size. At which point, then we can take basically the nodes of the measurements. And if we know we have that, then we can start building the chassis structure yeah. that will go here. Some of it we can do. Some of it we'll have to wait until we do the body lines. And then we'll actually put this thing on the ground and we'll start getting our coordinates from Cartesian planes based upon the drawing and actually laying out all the edges of the body, which we'll do in a thin steel rod, mm -hmm. which will be welded to it. And then that will effectively create us a wire buck form, which is like how the Italians did race cars back in the day, Ferrari, Maserati and all. And then we will make our panels to go over that and it'll be welded right to it and I'll be brushing real nice, theoretically. Yeah. I'm super excited to, for this method. I think it's super cool the way, you know, the wire buck is formed and how you use that to create the oh, body. Sure. I think it's awesome. For sure. And there's a lot of ways to do it. I think the English were the ones that did the wooden bucks more. The English obviously like the English wheel. I think the Italians were more into hammers and planishing hammers and stuff. So there's, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Just because you've seen it done one way by a bunch of fancy snooty people at Pebble Beach does not mean that's the only way to do it. The way we want to do it is the fastest, most effective way to make us a really super cool prototype that will drive well and last, t stand the test of time. And I'm a cheapo. So <laughs> hopefully this will teach you all and inspire you that you too can do something awesome, even with relatively modest means and tools. Um, on that note, look at this. Um, we got this awesome new welder from Miller. I'm pretty pumped about this actually. So this, this does MIG, TIG, and stick, which is kind of nuts. And the amazing thing about this is we just got it entry level price point, you guys. Um, I'm all about buying things to use. Yeah, and actually Miller was really nice and gave us and Genius Garage a bunch of safety gear and stuff, which is really nice. But I'm pretty pumped about this because MIG welding is awesome for most of the stuff you're going to do with hobbyists. Like all the race cars, the Batmobile stuff like I did in the past, I did it with a MIG uh, where I had shielded gas and did it that way. It's really versatile. But there's going to be stuff you want for a TIG, you know, for Genius Garage guys doing stuff and learning and then for doing really delicate stuff, we want to take it. So I'm pumped about that and I look forward to show you guys. Otherwise, Peyton, is there anything else for right now? No, I think that's just about it. Uh, I'm gonna set to work on cutting as soon as we cut video, so. Nice, I know these guys wanna see work. You're just gonna have to bear with me a little bit. Right now I'm kind of vlogging the progress because yeah. we're jamming, we're super busy and just looking after the guys at Genius Garage and helping them get going on their project with the Lycan and everything else takes a lot of time. Frankly, we just got back from, from Road America Racing yeah. and that was a lot and it's it's yeah. been chaotic. I mean, it, we've had a, a very busy, you know, two weeks of 
getting the lichen ready, yeah. going to the races, coming back, <laughs> organizing everything, moving the shop around. It's been yes. crazy. So bear with us a little bit as it's going. I promise you guys we'll be showing you all the work as it comes, but I want to keep you updated on the project. Uh, and as a spoiler, next week it looks like I'm going to get to test one of yeah. Mazda, the actual factory's MX-5 Cup cars before the IndyCar race in Mid Ohio next week. Heck yeah, man. And I'll definitely have video, which will be different from our video that I totally accidentally deleted from Road America. Man, you're, gonna, I, you're not gonna let that one go for a little while. No, I'm really mad at myself. You guys, I actually had a mic in my helmet in the Corvette and was smack talking Ferraris and obliterating Ferraris and Porsches the whole time. It was awesome! It was. Maybe, Trust us, it was, it was really awesome. Maybe it's, it's better it got deleted. Ever. You know, Ferrari will be less mad at us. <laughs> Ferrari's easy to pick on. All right, you guys. Look forward to see you next time.